obviously you grew up in a world where church was a was a thing. I mean, Loving. your family was yeah. in it. Uh -huh. Your mom was a pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, she was a preacher. Mm -hmm. She was a communicator. Uh, to my knowledge, she was not a rap artist, <laughs> but she knew she nah. knew how to drive the the word home, so to speak. For sure. And uh, I know that she started a school mm -hmm. at your local church. Did you go to that school? I did. Yeah. So, like, it's a K to twelve or K to eight. K to eight, yep. and you did all of it. Uh, all of it. Was she the principal at that time? Yes. <laughs> all right. So, so I would get in trouble in the principal's office, <laughs> and when I got I, home, I do a reprise. <laughs> yes. when got like home. you just said this four hours ago. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> and so, uh, and your mom and dad both have been a great home. That's my guess yes. for yes. you and your siblings. Yes. But talk to me about that church trip. Yeah. Uh, because I'm going to guess, I've been a pastor. Mm -hmm. I have four sons they would have stories to tell about the upside and the downside yeah. of living in the fishbowl, of just the, it's a little different role. That's yeah. your, I mean, you grew up as a pastor's kid. Yep. Tell me about it. I lived at the church. Sunday morning service, obviously Monday through Friday, school. But then also you got Wednesday night Bible study, Thursday choir rehearsal, you know, events on Friday, another rehearsal on Saturday. So I lived at the church. Um, and I formed my family there. My, my closest friends, a lot of them to this day, started there. So the route that most preacher's kids that I knew at that time took was to do everything that they could to say, I'm not with them. So I'm going out and I'm doing everything to, mm -hmm. you know. Individuate, separate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even if these things are, you know, damaging to my life and health and character and reputation mm -hmm. and things like that. It gets the point across of I'm not with them. I was the exact opposite. It was like I'm definitely with them. Like I I love everything about. Yes, it's annoying that you know I'm not at home in front of a video game. I'm trying to figure out how to come up with a creative game with my siblings in the pews. Like that's annoying, you know, as a child. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what it did was it it allowed me to fall in love um, with Christ's body. So before I fell in love with Jesus, I was in love with his people. Um, so the story of fishbowl, yes, um, you are always on. You know, my mom carried a, a heavy name still to this day in the city. So if I'm going anywhere that's not associated with Arlington, people know the name Swoop. Arlington's the name of the church. The name of the church, yeah. Yep, yep. People know the name Swoop. So it's like you don't have the luxury of acting up. You know, you don't have that. You know, you don't get the chance that other people get because there's notoriety attached to your name. Um, it was just modus operandi, honestly. It was a part of the game. It wasn't something that I had to unlearn. It was just kind of like, you know, the scriptures are true. A good name is worth more than rubies. And not only is that true, but I'm not trying to, I love my mom. I'm not trying to, you know, mess up her name and her rep that, you know, yeah, she's right. built. You, you had a sense that what I do matters to others. And it was helpful that I actually enjoyed being with these people. Yeah. Um, I think if I didn't enjoy that, I probably would have made some some different <laughs> sure, choices. Sure. Um, it came to a head, however, uh, with career trajectory. As a young man. As a young man, yeah. You know, singer, musician, uh, pastor. It's like that's probably where Swoop is going to end up. That's you know, we're we're seeing him. He acts and speaks very much like his mother. Um, he he loves the scriptures. He's playing the piano. Uh, he loves being around the music and X, Y, and Z. We could see him, you know, in these capacities in the next however many years. It makes years. so much sense. Yeah. yeah. And it was convenient <clears throat> as well, yeah, yeah. which is one of the things that, you know, I had to wrestle with where I was like, man, convenience does not dictate how what I should do. It's like just because it works doesn't mean that it's right. Right. There was not space for me as a rapper, there wasn't space for me in that fishbowl. There was space as a, a preacher, there was space as a uh, musician and things like that, but as a rapper, it was kind of like, we don't... There's no room in this house where we do that. We don't even know that this exists, first. <laughs> we don't actually want to know. <laughs> yeah, because the Christian hip-hop thing wasn't a, a <clears throat> huge deal at the time. Yeah, yeah. So hip-hop um, is kind of like, no, are you crazy? Yeah. You know. Um, so there wasn't space for me to spread my wings, but it was happening whether I wanted it to or not. 
you know it was this passion of like i i want to write i want to tell stories i want to teach people and this is a great tool of teaching but i can't do it with you know the family that i've built you know they know me as a musician right you know and they're utilizing me in a in a very heavy capacity a lot of responsibility as i grew um so i started to develop two worlds where it was kind of like as i told you earlier there are people that know me as a musician to this day have no clue that i rap like there were people calling my mom um i did a commercial that, that we spoke about like i just saw your son rapping in a commercial <laughs> What, when did that happen? <laughs> What's like, that about? <laughs> like, you've been rapping for a decade. Where have you been at? They had no clue. Yeah. And there are a lot of my fans that also have no clue because at around 18 or 19, I had to make a very clear separation. I'm not giving up on either one of these things. I, I still play at church on every Sunday to this day. I still rap. I can't do these together right now. I do want to figure out a way to bring them together. And I think that's where we are now. But at that time, it was kind of like, I got to be able to do both. And in order to do both, both, I have to separate from the fishbowl. I got to step outside of the fishbowl. This is what I know. This is my life. This has built me. And it has also prepared me to step away, to step away and not lose my character, step away and not lose my right, faith, right. step away and maintain my it name. It still defined you For in sure. some important ways. Those roots grew deep. And they're still there. They're still there, without a question. Um, there just needs to be a little bit of distance. That's and all. actually, um, as I'm listening to you, Swoop, you actually do have a lot of that pastor thing going on in you in the sense that you are committed to messaging. You're committed yes. to taking ideas that you consider to be truth yeah. and making sure they sink in. Yeah. You're using a different language and you're actually speaking to maybe a different audience. Maybe you're called to pastor in a way, but it's a completely different audience uh, <laughs> than the one that you grew up with. I mean, is that fair? Oh yeah, 100%. <clears throat> and, and truth be told, people are the same no matter where they are mm -hmm. uh, in, in the musical genre. Mm -hmm. And I hear you say, someday maybe, someday there's a way that these two audiences actually come together mm -hmm. and hear this message. Yeah, without, a, without question. and. I don't want to say that I did that. Yeah. I benefited from <clears throat> the blows that Lecrae took or the truth took or Kirk Franklin took because Kirk Franklin has a ton of hip hop in his music, yet it's still authentically gospel. Um, so I, I didn't do this on my own. I definitely am still a part of the merging um, because the message is the most important thing for me. It's like, yo, you know, all men are as grass and their glory as the flowers of the field. Like the grass is gonna go away, the flowers is gonna fade. It's the word of the Lord that stands forever. 